Number seven, which of the following slightly soluble compounds have, has a solubility greater than that calculated from its solubility product because of hydrolysis of the anion present? And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, we got seven uh, compounds here. And all of these are slightly soluble compounds. They all have a solubility product. Solubility product, remember, is a KSP. So the S and P in KSP is solubility product, SP. Okay, so that just means that all of these seven compounds will exist majoritively as the solid. The breakdown between all of these anions and the cations, the ions, are very, very, very slim to nothing, mainly because a KSP has such a low value. But now they're saying that hydrolysis of an anion is present. So the first thing is, is we got to find out what all these anions are in these compounds. Remember, the anion is always the negative charge. So we're going to go through each one of these and just write out what the anion is. Now for this exercise, we don't care if you can find out the actual, uh, the correct charge of the anion. I just want you to make sure that you can pinpoint the elements and how many of them in the compounds. So, for example, the first one, AgCl. What would be the anion in AgCl? Which one is the negative charge? Remember, the negatives are always in the back. So in this case, it would just be the chlorine. Now, this is the part that I don't care about, you know, whether you know this as a negative one charge, right? Just be able to pinpoint that it's chlorine. But chlorine, it's in group 17 on the periodic table, or 7A. It's always going to be a negative one charge. So now let's just keep running through these. So we have BASO4. Which one is the anion here? This one is the polyatomic. This is SO4. That's sulfate. So SO4 is the polyatomic here, and SO4 always has a negative two charge. Let's keep going. We got CA. F2, the anion for CAF2 would be the fluorine, right? I don't care that I have two of them. That's not the purpose of this, you know, example. And it's a negative one charge. It's a halogen. Uh, let's keep going. We have Hg2, I2. The anion here would be the last element. That's the iodine. Once again, I don't care that I have two of them, and it's a negative one. Let's see, MnCO3. This is the anion, the carbonate. Remember, CO3 is a polyatomic ion, always has a negative two charge. And we got two more, zinc 2 a sulfide. The S is the anion here. That's a two negative charge. This is a ionic compound that's reduced because of those charges. And then the last one that we have, and maybe I'll just put it over here, PB, ooh, PBS, again. So we have another S, that's the same thing. So this would also be an S two minus. Okay, now, this is the part that comes from, you know, knowledge of an earlier chapter. Any time that you're trying to make the solubility greater, what we want is we want an anion, because we're talking about anion, so we want an anion that is coming from a weak acid. Because what's going to happen is the anion is going to react with water. That's what hydrolysis is all about, reacting with water. And it's going to pull away the concentrations of the anions but only for the weak anions, not for the strong anions, because remember, strong anions, or the strong, sorry, I don't mean strong anions, I mean strong acids. Remember, strong acids are always going to dissociate 100%, so there's no solubility in there. Weak acids, however, they have Ka values. So all we have to do is just match up, are any of these anions of a weak acid? Now, there's tons of weak acids out there. 
but there's only six strong acids in this world. So it's just easier to just know your six strong acids and just see, is this anion coming from a strong acid or not? We want it to come from a weak acid in order to answer this question. So, so let's do the first one, Cl. Do I see a Cl in any of these anions in the strong acids? Remember, the anions are the last ones. So ClBr, I, NO3, ClO4, and SO4. And yep, the Cl is right here. So this is coming from a weak, uh, sorry, a strong acid. So that has nothing to do with making that solubility greater. This is not one of them. The next one, the anion is SO4. Is any of the anions in a strong acid SO4? Yes, it is. Here it is. And since it's coming from a strong acid, it's not going to make that solubility greater, so I can cancel this out. Next one, F minus. Is there an F as one of the anions in your strong acid? I don't see it. So that means that this came from a weak acid. So I'm going to highlight this one as one of my answers. Let's keep going. HD2I2 has an I for its anion. And as I'm looking at my strong acids, I do see an I. So that's a strong acid anion. So that would not be making the solubility greater. Next, CO3 2 minus. Do I see a CO3 2 minus or a CO3 as one of my strong acids? Nope. That means it came from a weak acid. So that's one of the answers. And then both these are the same. They both have S in their, um, in their anions. Is there just an S as one of my anions in my strong acids? Nope. So that means that both of these had to come from a weak acid, and therefore both of them would uh, make the solubility greater. And there you go, four answers for this one. All right? So I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for that. And I will see you all in later lessons. Okay, have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.